Cybersecurity Group to push 30 more national priorities Cyber attacks are probably one of the worst things that can happen to a country or a huge corporation. The United States has been through a few cyber attacks lately, and it's only going to get worse if they don't do something about it. Today, we will be taking a look at how these cyber attacks have forced a cybersecurity group to push 30 more national priorities. Before we get into the video, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe with bell notifications on for more content like this. What is a cyber attack? It is important you know about certain things before we get into the main topic of the video. Cyber terrorists or hackers use one or more of their computers to launch an attack against one single or even a large network of computers with obvious malicious intent. This is called a cyber attack. These attacks can be pretty hurtful to the corporation or even a nation. They can steal vital data and information, disable computers, and even use a hacked computer to launch other kinds of attack. These attacks can be done with a plenty of methods like phishing, denying a certain service, ransomware, or just attaching a malware in any files or softwares. Cyber attacks can spell disaster if done on a nationwide level. It is scary because they can even gain access to launch codes of nuclear missiles if they do it right. That is terrifying. They can quite possibly start World War III. The SolarWinds sunburst was one of the biggest cyber attacks targeted in the US recently. It is reported to have affected important US government offices and even several private sectors. Researchers decided to call the attack Sunburst and stated that it's one of the most sophisticated and severe attacks ever seen. The hackers who launched this attack were able to do it because they installed a backdoor into the SolarWinds software updates. What seemed like a regular software was actually a Trojan horse that was downloaded by over 18,000 companies and government offices. This tiny little backdoor is what caused the massive cyber attack. Let that sink in. The attackers used the backdoor to infiltrate the business's assets, allowing them to spy on the business and access its data, but just simply taking advantage of a routine IT practice of software upgrades. Ransomware's comeback has been on the rise. Small local and state government entities have been targeted, mostly in the southeast part of the United States. With the proliferation of cloud computing, cloud-based subscription services and the availability of mobile devices, conventional network perimeters are crumbling. As the number of vectors grow, so does the number of methods to attack a company. There was an increase of 50% in the average daily ransomware attack compared to the early periods of the year, according to a research. A major wave of ransomware assaults hit organizations all around the world, with healthcare being the most targeted industry. The impact on business has expanded enormously as these attacks have risen in frequency and intensity. Are these cyber attacks preventable? Regardless of how often and consistent these cyber attacks are, they're still very preventable. An end-to-end cybersecurity architecture that covers all networks, endpoint and mobile devices, and the cloud is necessary when it comes to preventing these types of cyber attacks. You can streamline administration of many security layers and govern policy through a single pane of glass with the correct architecture. This enables you to link events from various network settings, cloud services, and mobile infrastructures. Certain extra measures you can take to prevent cyber attacks are choosing to prevent the attack over detecting it, covering all vectors, maintaining a good security system, and employing the most advanced technologies. Cybersecurity The act of securing systems, networks, and programs from digital threats is known as cybersecurity. Basically, cybersecurity is important if you want to protect yourself from cyber attacks. However, because there are more devices than people nowadays and attackers are growing more inventive, adopting efficient cybersecurity measures is extremely difficult. There are always several different layers of high-level protection spread across the computer or the network in a good approach to cybersecurity. There are many different things in an organization that should complement each other when it comes to having good cyber defense against the attacks. Basic data security practices such as choosing strong passwords, being aware of attachments in email, and backing up data must all be understood and followed by users. Organizations need a process in mind for dealing with both attempted and successful cyber assaults. An organization's ability to recognize assaults, defend systems, detect and act to threats, and recover from successful assaults is essential. You can only protect yourself from cyber attacks with the right technology. You are going to need a very advanced level of protection because the attackers use very new and sophisticated methods. It is important to protect the endpoint devices like your smartphone device, router, and the computer. 
It is also highly recommended to have your networks and cloud secured as well. Advanced cyber defense measures are beneficial to everyone in today's linked environment. A cybersecurity assault on an individual level may lead to everything from identity theft to extortion attempts to the loss of crucial data. Critical infrastructure such as power plants, hospitals, and financial services organizations is used by everyone. It is important to keep these and other institutions secure in order for society to function. Now that we know everything about cybersecurity and cyber attacks, let's talk about what happened with the cybersecurity group. The cybersecurity group in question is the Cyberspace Solarium. They worked with legislators and the Trump administration last year to have 27 policy suggestions implemented. This year, they're trying to get 30 more policy recommendations implemented. According to a commissioner and two other outside sources, some of the most important suggested policies for 2021 are federal reporting requirements, national data protection legislation, and also the creation of a Bureau for Cyber Statistics. R Street Institute Senior Fellow for Cybersecurity Paul Rosenzweig stated that the U.S. government lacks a comprehensive picture of cyber risks and also mentioned how frequently public and private companies are affected. He wanted these issues to be fixed as soon as possible. It boggles my mind that 15 years into this cybersecurity crisis, we still don't have an operating picture of how frequently and what sorts of what breaches occur in the United States," Paul stated in a virtual interview. He also added, without a comprehensive breach notification law, we will never get a sense of what is actually happening on the ground. A number of high-profile cyber attacks have raised cybersecurity's profile in the public eye. SolarWinds, the same company we talked about earlier, was reported to be hacked back in December. That was not the only attack that happened recently. The oil and gas transport network Colonial Pipeline was struck with ransomware in early May by Russia-linked attackers, forcing the firm to shut down and causing a gas shortage in the U.S. Southeast. The CSE co-chairs Senator Angus S. King Jr. had this to say, Cybersecurity has for years been a wonky, abstract concern to most Americans. The Cyberspace Solarium Commission, which was established in August 2018, brought together a nonpartisan group of politicians and professionals to develop policy reforms to improve the United States' cyber posture and defense capability. The National Defense Authorization Act, which was approved in 2020, had more than two dozen suggestions. Despite the fact that the two of the committee's proposals have subsequently been included into other laws, the committee is focused on moving forward with 30 key proposals this year. They also want to make sure that the policies that were already passed are actually going to work. During the RSA session, French Lufo, a CSE commissioner and director of Auburn University's McCrary Institute for Cyber and Critical Infrastructure Security said, The old adage is, policy without resources is rhetoric. So we need to make sure we are funding some of these initiatives as well. He also goes on and adds, Cyber goes far beyond national security, so we need to make sure that there are other congressional vehicles, committees, and other approaches to be able to implement other recommendations and provision. The CSE published a white paper in January with a list of 15 objectives for the Biden administration, including the establishment of the Office of the National Cyber Director and the publication of a national cybersecurity strategy. As requested, Biden created the office and he also made sure to nominate Chris Inglis to the National Cyber Director. He also issued an executive order requesting to make the country's defense against cyber attacks stronger. There are more work to be done about these issues. Some of them includes a Cyber Emergency Response Fund to assist government agencies in surviving cyber attacks, a Cyber Response Fund similar to a National Disaster Fund, establishing a National Security Investment Corporation to finance early research into the country's goals, developing a supply chain intelligence center that'll collaborate with the business sector, and also the Cyber Diplomacy Act, which would appoint a member of the State Department to lead international cyber policy conversations. Tom Corcoran, head of cybersecurity at Farmers Insurance Group, stated that private sectors need a federal privacy and data protection. Companies that operate nationally in the U.S., every time they have an issue, they have to do a 50-state analysis of what is required of them, Tom said. He also added, a national law would certainly make companies' lives a lot easier. CSE's Chilufo said that it would take a while for them to be able to establish a communication system that can eliminate the information sharing issues they have. He also stated that making this possible is not really an easy task. We need to make sure that we tackle a whole host of issues, including privacy, 
that are very complex. We can't continue to punt on the second down. We have been punting this ball down the road far too long, he said regarding the question about establishing good communication. That concludes the video. What do you think about the recent cyber attacks? Will they be preventable in the future with these new policies? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section down below. Don't forget to leave a like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe with bell notifications on so you don't miss out on our future uploads. Thanks for watching.